Hello, everybody. Welcome into a Moon Duck replay cast here. Our first, well, my first replay cast of all time. Um, of course, for those of you that don't know about this, or if you're watching this in the Moon Duck VOD on YouTube, what have you, uh, we'll be going through and watching a replay that someone has submitted, of course, uh, and purchased from Moonduck.tv. So. Uh, if you are interested in something along those lines, check out Moonduck.tv. But yeah, my name's Mont. Um, it's been a little while. I haven't, you know, been around for for too long lately, and uh, it's nice to get back and to be able to cast some Dota. And we've got a good one here. Hopefully, it's gonna be. This replay has been submitted by Steve Winston from Ottawa, Canada. So, uh, unfortunately, I don't know exactly who Steve is, what character he's playing. And we'll just have to go by the assumption that he's probably going to be the one that does the best. Uh, throughout this game of Dota 2, so let me check, make sure everything's good in terms of settings. Uh, my mic's not muted. It looks like we're good on. Well, I probably shouldn't alt tab. I won't do that anymore. And uh, we'll get into the game. This is going to be the first game of Underlord that I cast. Firestorm. Let's just go through some of these abilities. The Firestorm is the AOE damage ability. You have Pit of Malice, obviously. <clears throat> you have. Atrophy Aura, which was the thing that a lot of people were talking about going into uh, these past couple of months. You know, gaining that bonus damage, obviously. And then you have Dark Rift, which is the teleportation, uh, which is something that I'm looking forward to as we progress through the game. So, let's get into some introductions real quick. On the Dire side, we have Mithras playing the Anti-Mage. We'll have Sandman playing the Keeper of the Light. We have some Asian characters, and then two number twos playing the Phoenix. On the... Mid lane, we have the What playing an Arc Warden, so this game is going to be probably an hour long. And we have Heartbroken playing the Tiny, and then down bottom we have Happy Hail playing the Tramp Protector, Earthshaker being played by Mid or Nickelback, which is a great name. Bingo Teddy playing the Underlord, and Lit 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 playing the Slark, which will leave DGC07's son. So that guy's somebody's son, apparently. So the way that this is shaping up right now is it looks like a standard laning phase for the Dire side. In mid lane, you have an interesting matchup. Not one we'll ever really see in a professional game, but... And then bottom, you have a, a dual lane that's really going to be difficult for this Radiant team. So I really like the way that the, the Dire are... I mean, the Dire laning 2-1-2, standard stuff, but the Radiant team decided to throw in the jungle, which is going to make that bottom lane harder. And not only the bottom lane, but the top lane, too, if they decided to go for that 2-1-2 starting, uh, starting lineup, but... Looks like Happy Hale in trouble. They missed the Firestorm, so Happy Hale might actually live. He's going to salve up, and Bingo Teddy, how far is he going to chase this is the question. Happy Hale's going to get caught in the tree line. He's already used his living armor, so that's gone. He's got a stout shield and a coin blade. He'll eat his way through with two tangos. It'll make his way out. The Fisher doesn't block Lit Lit Lit, but Midder Nickelback does stop Bingo Teddy from getting any closer and throwing out that Firestorm. You can look at the AoE range, see how close he is to hitting it. So this bottom lane, not too much happening there. We'll keep our eyes peeled. Look towards the other lanes. The what on the Arc Warden sitting at three last hits. The Tiny sitting at seven and three. So Heartbroken having a very good game. And we'll see how that goes as we progress through this. And we'll see him throwing down. I, I actually forgot the names of the spells for Arc Warden. Spark Rate. And then Flux, the Magnetic Field, and then Tempest Double. Okay. It'll be hard to keep track of them. No real Arc Warden cast coming out. So Mithras should be getting free farm in this top lane. In fact, he has 10 CS currently, so he should be fine. I don't really know what... MR this range is in, but right now it looks like these people are, are pretty good. Uh, they're last hitting well, for the most part. They're, they're ha they're, the, the play bottom is the biggest indication. This play that happened over here, I can't draw on the map because it's a replay, but the play that happened over there is just a big indication that this is not like a, a 2, you know, 0.5 to 3k game. This is probably a bit higher than that. Uh, I'd be surprised if it was lower than, than 3k. I'd be very surprised if it was lower than 3k. But we'll see how things progress. The Slark 6CS is obviously a very difficult lane. Meanwhile, Mithras is, again, still getting good farm. Misses that last hit. He does have one point mana break, so he should have just saved his auto attack until the creep was alone. He's a Quelling Blade, so... so that's something you'll see around, like, that 4K bracket. The what's going to get Avalanche? Toss not coming through. Our broken still slowed up. You can see he's got that flux on him. There's the Toss coming through. Won't be enough damage. Here comes Mid or Nickelback rotating again. Fisher's still available. It's level one. Not the most damage in the world. Spark Wraith not doing really any damage. Missing, in fact. What's going to go again? Throws up another Spark Wraith. Toss back. Not getting the kill. Firestorm. Not enough damage, but it's close. He's sitting at 30 HP right now. First blood is drawn by Sandman in the meantime. And finally, Bingo Teddy gets the kill with Heartbroken throwing up that toss and actually getting that last hit. Bingo Teddy looking for Mid or Nickelback. He won't be able to find it, it looks like, even with the Firestorm. And then first blood is a crude top lane on this Phoenix. It would feel really bad if Sandman is, in fact, our, our protagonist here, because I don't want to miss anything that the, the, the person does, but... 
And there was some crazy action happening mid lane and then back towards that top lane. I'm, I'm assuming what happened was they, they just found... He, I don't know how he died there. He did not have enough... Did he not have Icarus dive up? It must have been on cooldown for 36 seconds or he just was caught out of position. It's not like he has Mana Void or they have really any disable. Mana Leak maybe is what... No, he doesn't have Mana Leaks. He's only got Illuminating Chakra. Hmm, strange. <laughs> DGC07 Sun still farming the jungle. Iron Talon Tranquil is coming soon. So, okay time for now. Only 14 last hits. Meanwhile, Sammy getting chased down top lane by Bingo Teddy in two. Not able to find that pickup. Mithra is still farming away as we talk. And the what continues to go back to work in terms of... Oh, he's got a Keela. I know he's got a Keela hero, but... It's still strange to see Arc Raiden... Or Arc, or Arc Warden. Yeah, Arc Raiden. And Illuminate just barely misses on two. And Sam is going to go back to work with the right clicks, which do a significant amount of damage. He's got his energy booster, by the way. So that first blood, really huge. Illuminate's going to come through. That time it'll connect. And if Mithras had Mana Void, he might go for that kill. Happy held down bottom, barely surviving. Fisher comes through, heartbroken, in some trouble. He looks like he might fall here. Toss back, though. Nicely done. Heartbroken with a sick play, but is it going to be enough? You're going to throw up that Spark Wraith, and Heartbroken will pop the regen rune. He can go for a combo here in three seconds, and we'll see. There's the toss. He doesn't go for the combo. He should have waited. That would have gotten him the kill. But right now, he's just trying to juke and jive. Avalanche is going to come through. Mid or nickel back. One more right click. There's the toss. He doesn't even need it. The what's barely surviving as well. And Heartbroken is dancing around these players. There's going to be the Flux coming in. Heartbroken continues to juke on the opposite side of the river. And the what just cannot chase him. And there's another Fairy Fire. He's out of mana, though. And finally, will go down as Sandman does rotate. But it cleans up that kill. Observer Ward dropped on the ground by two, and Phoenix is just like, all right, well, nothing I can do there. Five minutes into the game, we still have your CS leader being Mithras. He's going to go for the early Perseverance build, not picking up uh, boots yet, no treads, no just standard Ring of Health, and then into treads or something along those lines. So it's just it's getting that Perseverance early, so he has the mana regeneration on top of the health regeneration. Heartbroken will TP back in. Having a great game, honestly, on his Tiny. But uh, some good plays from the Dire side as well. This bottom lane, this Earthshaker has been a player, but they've been getting outplayed. The what will pop the yes. Tempest double. Thought the Phoenix was actually the real one, but it was an illusion. The other illusion in the jungle being killed by Sandman. Lit, 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 and Happy Hail. Happy Hail now getting his Arcane Boots. So lots of Arcane's going to be coming soon, which, by the way, Arcane's on a Keeper of the Light. A little bit of an interesting decision. Not the craziest thing, but still. Underlord now starting to make this a dual lane, and the axe is in bottom, and uh, Lit 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 still getting 26 CS in a pressured dual lane down here, despite having a pretty rough time of things. He's done pretty well. No boots for the what just yet. Meanwhile, what does the tiny have? Boots and a bottle and a wand on top of it too, so good early game items coming out. Arcane's picked up and popped by the Treant Protector, who's sitting at Elite C level 2 in Living Armor. A lot of damage. There's the Shadow Dance coming out. The Enchant Totem. Fisher on cooldown. Lit, lit, lit. Still going to work, but not anywhere near enough damage. But here comes DGC. He's going to try to turn this good Fisher, though. Stunned up on him. He'll try to get this kill on Happy Hail. They're going to try to chase after Mid or Nick and Black as well as they clear out. The Treant Protector tosses up, and they will find this Earthshaker momentarily. He will get taken down. Lit, lit, lit. One more right click. He stays alive. Tread swaps and uses his stick at the perfect time. Heartbroken in trouble to the Flux. The Tempest Double going to work. Still doing a lot of damage. Here's the Spark Wraith. Does not walk through it. Guesses incorrectly. Heartbroken walks through the lane. And he will stay alive. Very close. Good engagement for the Radiant team. Axe comes out of the jungle. Provides him steam. Two kills. And gets Radiant's himself up to 1,000 gold in the process. There's the Sun Ray. Pounces up the what? Getting caught now. This is, I think, his regular one. And he's got a small no Tempest Double. It was on cooldown, as you can see. Solar comes in from the side. No vision coming out here for this dire team. And they just pounce up and find a kill. There's no vision down here at this bottom rune area or in the jungle or anywhere. Invisibility. And Bingo Teddy will rotate back to the top. Almost level 6, so we're going to have to watch out for the Dark Rift, which is coming rather soon. Should get level 6 pretty quickly here. He's the only one in lane. Assuming Mithras doesn't no. deny everything, and even if he does, he should still get it rather quickly. The lane is pushed out, so he will have to wait a fair bit. Heartbroken sitting in 18 last hits, and the what? Only 24. There's going to be a toss avalanche combo. Uh, looks like the spark break is going to mix, and they will get the second one off. That'll do some damage, and then he will try to get away after the flux is done. Down bottom, level 4. Not level 6. Might have been able to get a solo kill with level 6. Probably not, but he will get some help in the form of the Triumph Protector, or at least he's looking to help. 
As you can see, the tree and protector is a little further back. So item-wise, there's a lot of early game items. Nothing too big coming out just yet. The biggest thing is the Sandman has a headdress now. He's looking to build up that mech, so we'll, we'll see how he's doing right now. He's been in the jungle for a long time, just hitting that Illuminate. He's got 17 last hits, but down bottom, this is where the action's happening. There's the Sunray coming out. Dark Pack will go. There's the overgrowth. He Dark Packed it off. He did, and then Sunray will provide them the kill with a couple of right clicks going the way of the Slark. And he'll find that kill on the Tree of Protector as the Axe gets it done with Battle Hunger. I like the skill build to a certain extent. I think it's useful to have one point in Battle Hunger. And Mithras continues to just CS like crazy. Nine and a half minutes, 60 CS, very good lane. Not really dealt with at all. They is one assist to his name. Rain of Fire coming through. Bingo Teddy looking to give him a maybe a pit of mouse or I don't know. And Mithras will back up and continue to farm under his tower. So he's having a pretty solid game. You can see he's top of the net worth right now. The Slark is second. A lot of that due to the three assist and one kill he has going his way. The CS, he's he's pretty far behind. But he will pick up that Claymore for war, what I imagine to be inevitably a Shadow Blade. TPing in. Sandman is here. He's got that headdress ready to go. They can't really do much together. But if they get a third hero, they can easily combo something up. But down bottom, it's Minter Nickelback who's stunned up. They get the pounce off the Toss Avalanche. Not really much of a combo, but they use them in progression to find themselves that kill for Heartbroken. And back and forth we go. Graphs, it's a little bit early for this, but it is a 500 net worth advantage for the Radiant team with the 1,000 experience lead going for the Radiant squad as well. So there is a bit of advantage for this Radiant team, and a lot of that does come from Heartbroken and the Axe getting free farm in the jungle. You just don't have that same sort of thing. I mean, yes, you have Sandman, arguably, who's just been farming stacks, but it's not enough. And this Arc Ward falling a little bit behind earlier on is starting to hit them. Happy Heal will throw up a ward as this Observer Ward is going to scout things out. And so they can de-ward that. In fact, they're moving over there together. No smokes purchased up yet for this Radiant team. Neither team using smokes currently to their advantage. Illuminate just trying to, I guess, clear out a group wave, scout things out. Mistimed, however. Stop playing. Avalanche is going to go. Mithras is a very tough kill. I, they can't get this. They don't have nearly enough lockdown to be able to get this done. He has four points in blink, and he's just going to be fine. In fact, he's looking to go back in. Mithras is going to fight this, but good. Supernova coming out. Heartbroken. Looking to turn. Avalanche back to five. Toss is still there. Happy Hail will take that damage, but it's not enough. Now, Supernova gone. Icarus dive back up with Sunray ready to go. Salmon will walk in. Spark Wraith not there. There comes the Arc Warden. Tempest doubles back up in two. Another Spark Wraith coming out. They've got, I think... Some damage, but not enough to bring him down. Happy Ellen Salmon looking for more, but the Illuminate is not there. They've rotated four heroes to defend this. In fact, both teams have four heroes in this top lane. I feel like this is a bit of an over-rotation unless they get a kill. Great Avalanche, Sunray, the combo is there! The spins, and it's a double kill for Heartbroken. Beautifully done. And Sandman now getting chased down as well. Blink off! DGC a little too much there. A little too fancy, and Mithras continues to farm back up. I thought they killed three. They did. Uh, maybe they didn't. Strange. Still a great fight coming out. That raiding team is going to have even more farm to work with now. Again, though, Heartbroken still can't quite get above the anti mage Sandman caught out. There's the Icarus dive, Firestorm, and Calling Blade to finish him off. Down bottom, they're looking for the Slark sitting in the tree line right now, and luckily it looks like they won't be able to find him. Still trying to get to that Shadow Blade as Top is being pushed in by this Radiant team. Good stuff there. And Mithras continues to go to work in the jungle. His Battle Fury almost done, but again, Battle Fury is not going to win you the game. You've got to get some farm after that. We've seen so many times where uh, an anti-mage would get a Battle Fury, Radiant's and, and this is a thing that's very common attack. in pubs. We'll just assume he can start fighting with Treads Battle Fury. It's just not enough, usually. Down bottom, though, pounces up. Lit Lit actually out of mana. There's the Overgrowth. They did take that tier attack. 1 tower mid, by the way. Overgrowth doing some nice work as he keeps him in place to get hammer fisted, but still the Dark Pack will come through. Not only that, but he he's too tanky. Unless ha Happy Happy Hill might be able to get this kill. There's no pounce. Some right will heal him up, though, and with that should probably be the end of it. Happy Hail had any AoE damage to the tree and protector. He probably could have killed both of them. Unfortunately, it's just not how the hero works. Not a very good hero for that type of thing. Also one of the worst heroes in the game currently, unfortunately. Spark Wraith almost catching out this uh, this Slark, but he sees it coming. He's got to back away. Supernova comes out so that the Phoenix can be back to full health. The Illuminate will come through, not catching out anybody, and that will be the end of the chase. 
Mithras now has his headdress looking to get into Vlad's here, I would imagine. He'll send out a salve as well. Uh, Battle Fury done. Still no treads, which... I'm... I like, I like getting treads early, but I can understand not getting it. Tiny will find a solo kill. Heartbroken goes in again and he finds out Earthshaker getting caught by a solo kill. And this was without... This was a haste rune. This is why they got that kill. It was the only reason why. Was, not the only reason, but one of the reasons. TP's in bottom. Happy Hill looking for another overgrowth, but here we go. They've got the Underlord coming through. They jump in. They get off some damage. Happy Hill caught. The Sunray will do the work with the Color Blade, and they find two for G D DGC Sun. Looking for another in Sandman, and they won't be able to find this potential pickup. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. That was the Tempest double that got caught, excuse me. Blinken call on to two. Beautifully done by this axe. He's going to find another kill, a double. Can he find the triple? He's got Color Blade, and he will get it. DGC. Sun is going in right now. Three dead on that dire side. They continue to accrue a lead playing this five-man style of Dota as Mithras continues to split the map like normal anti-mages would at this point in the game. It is 14 to 2. And they are still crushing it. They will take that tier one tower down bottom after the team fight has been uh, has been uh I guess over. And the Phoenix now with 2,000 gold almost. He's going to get that Midas if he wants it. He wants to go Blink Dagger, but it'd be a, a bit of an uncommon choice, I feel like, for that particular hero. It's not the most uncommon choice. It's just uncommon at this point in time. You see that, at least it used to be, that Midas used to be picked up super early or, or tried to be every game. Maybe get an urn first, go from there. This game is not over for the Dire team. They have an Anti-Mage. They have an Arc Warden. So they have potential ways back into this game, and it might actually turn into one of those comeback type situations. But they have to deal with this team fight, team fight coming out from the Radiant team here. So the drums are now up for the Tiny. Arcanes, Blink Tag will probably be next. Very good fighting build in terms of what he can provide in terms of utility and spell cooldowns. Not very good in terms of fighting later on down the road with an Aghanim Scepter. And that Vlad is, is about completed for the Anti-Mage. Which is huge. Call, not connecting on Happy Hill, but DGC is still going to chase. There's the Leech Seed. Happy Hill needed to not turn around there, but he knew he was probably dead anyway. Living Armor is up, and it's going to be there for a moment to try to get the Nature's Guys off. It's a good attempt, but still, the, the kill will go to the Axe. And that's the Shadow Blade for the Slark coming through, and a Vanguard for the Axe, so this is going to get even harder. Here comes the Shadow Blade. They'll find the Tempest Double, not the right... Not the right hero to get. Mithras is going to get caught. He's going to blink in aggressively. Mithras going in too hard. It's a Firestorm coming through. Pounce misses. Mithras is blanking. He can use it momentarily and will do so. DGC getting chased out. Great Echo Slam. And he will go down in the Aftershock. Now lit, lit in trouble. They jump in. Here's Heartbroken. Great Mana Void coming out for Mithras to turn it around. He jumps back and he gets the Mana Void. And they're looking for more. Can they find this fourth hero to chase down as Phoenix finally TPs into the fray? Looks like they, that will be the end of the fight. Mithras cleans it up with the level 2 mana void. They get 2,000 gold out of it. The anti-mage getting a solid 643. Not to mention a solid amount of experience as well for the Arc Warden. Great engagement. And they need a little bit more than that, though. They need a little bit more. That's a great start for, for this dire team, but they need a little bit more. There's the Blink Dagger for the Earthshaker, now up and ready to go. That is a huge item. Uh, I move away my camera for one second and Sandma gets snuffed out, unfortunately. Did he just Dark Rift back in the lane? Or did he Dark Rift into the fight? Well, the what in trouble? Looks like he might get solo kill. Dagon's coming out. Good try. But even with those two Dagons, those two Dagon level ones, it's not enough to bring down this uh, this Slark. Impressive performance, and he's going to survive and get out. 3 1 and 8, so the what gets caught yet again. 0 oh, 5 and 4 for the Arc Ward. Not the best game, but it can come back with the help of the Anti Mage. Good vision for the rating team as of right now. And no real vision for the Dire team other than back... Well, I should say no real vision. They have a lot of deep wards. The problem with these wards, I feel like, are that they're too deep almost. This one, not so much, but... Uh, this one is, isn't really netting them any kills. They're not really progressing through the... They're not making this kind of movement. The, the ward would be better served to be this area. There's the Blink Call. Sandman might get caught again after just dying. There's the Sunray. Calling Blade won't go as he gets stunned up by 
Fisher coming out, but there's going to be the Supernova on top, and Sandman will end up falling, but Phoenix might give his life for this. Mithras will take that kill. DGC going too far, and Heartbroken gets zapped down. Mid or Nickelback finds yet another engagement that they can use, and there's going to be the overgrowth. DGC is not making it out. The what gets a double kill, just like I talked about. He gets right back into it, and Mithras comes in and helps provide a couple of kills as well. So some great plays from this dire team. Sandman baiting his life. They get off a couple of really good spells, including Happy Hills and Overgrowth to find that kill on the axe, as well as the Earthshaker finding a couple of good enchants, as well as Fishers. Not only that, but his Echo Slam is back up when he respawns. Try to find something with that. A smoke here would be great. You know, I just, I'm waiting for the smoke, for the first smoke from, I think there was one smoke earlier, but that was it. I don't know what team used it. Some good vision control by Sandman. Great two D wards. He should have gotten this one down here as well, but they I think that broke out into a fight last time. And so Sandman now. Maybe he can journey and try to take down that observer ward. But uh, he will he'll be by himself if he tries to do so. Anti Mage Vlad's treads, Battle Fury now building into that Yasha, which will inevitably be the Mantis style that we all know and love for AMs. There's going to be a great choice from that mid or nickelback picking up the Tome of Knowledge as well. Use that up. Get back to work. And here we go. This might be the first smoke of the game. It's going to be used by the Radiant team. They're going to try to find the Santa Mage. This is a tough kill, but if Mithras gets caught with his pants down, and he might, no blink available for three. They're going to go from they get the call as well as the toss avalanche combo. Mithras is tanky. Not tanky enough. Dead for 65. They bring him down and Slark getting the kill. A gigantic pickoff. And now Sandman and the rest of the crew backing up saying we cannot fight with our, our anti mage and nor do we want to. Very, very important pick for this Radiant team. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. And they've got 36 seconds without this anti mage. I don't know if they really want to fight. Good living armor though, stopping this push from happening, really. And the Wets just foot pushing with Tempest Double, as you've seen before. Now the jump in, though, coming through. Sandman getting caught. There's the Echo Slam. He's going to hammer it to two, but Mid-Earth will back and get caught down. The Calling Blade going there. going to jump in. They've got more damage from the Slark. The Pounce as well as the Dark Pack. Now they get the Supernova. That's the Tempest Double going down. They lose four heroes. Well, three if you don't include the anti Age. That's a gigantic fight for the Radiant team. And they'll progress right into that Tier 1 tower. Really good engagement from them. Radiant structures are fortified. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Radiant's bottom tower. And finally back attack. alive picks up his Yasha. He's heading over to that mid lane, but not Dyer's much he can do there. I think he's just gonna take some jungle camps instead. The right decision. And we're gonna fire fire storm. Dyer's either. middle tower Pretty good. is under attack. And they'll try to take two. I think you defend this if you're the you're the dire team, and that's a good call from the rating team to back there. You look at how low the Phoenix is without mech, without supernova. Great decision. The Radiant team will walk over an Observer Ward. So they know that they're trying to come back in. But Sandman's a little too far. He's going to drop the Sentry down. Avalanche coming through and they'll find Heartbroken. Fish is going to come out. Sunray not able to heal. And here comes Math Mithras coming in. There's the Pit of Malice. He's going to try to get the Mana Void off. Can't in time. Taking a lot of damage. Can he blink out? Yes, absolutely. Here comes the Overgrowth as well. Not enough damage to bring down Litlip, -Lit, but there's the Leech going into DGZ. They get off the Mana Leak as well. Sandman in trouble. The Dark Pact is there. Stick is up, jumping in. There's the Mana Void. They've got it. He's not going to use it. Decides against it. They back away. Icarus like Simon not doing enough damage to Mithras. It's going to be a back out call from Phoenix and the rest of the crew. On the other side, the what was coming in. That was his real hero, not his Tempest Double looking for his zap to finish somebody off. Turns into a two for nothing exchange. Very good fight for this dire team again. And so with that, 22, almost 23 minutes into this game, we're sitting at currently a 5,000 net worth advantage for the Radiant team. That fight man and that kill in the anti mage provided a lot. Experience-wise, it's about even. Um, a little bit in favor of the Radiant team, but the experience is, is pretty much even. It will probably be won by the Dire team later on down the road. They just have better Radiant's wave clear. They have better ways to push waves attack. out. Um, they can get Radiant's more of the map control. I just Not that the Radiant team can't. It's just... I don't know. The Radiant are playing as five so much. I'd be very surprised to see them continue with this. You know, try to go into that split pushing type of mentality and try to get experience that way. Silver Edge is up for the Slark, going for that first. Interestingly enough, Mithras is going to be caught here, but it's only the Phoenix. They have no way of locking down, even with a pounce. He's going to be able to get out pretty easily with the blink. 
Mithras is going to be able to get out now, and Litlit -Lit still just cannot catch this guy. He should not go for this kill. His shadow, shadow Blade is up. They know that he's there. They can see him. They're going to go turn and right-click him now. There's the Mana Leak as well. They can go for a Mana Void. Litlit -Lit will finally use the Shadow Dance. Silver Edge is back up in two. Do they have detection? They do not. Not on them. The Mana Void, though, is more than enough. He walks through the Sentry Rage. They cleave him and chew him down. Mithras finding the freebie the fisher they might find too bingo teddy there's the spark rate coming in pit of malice is going to keep them locked in place but that is it they still get the kill on sandman finds the pickup with the illuminate coming out two quick kills that shouldn't have happened in mithras being involved in both of them or at least one continues to skyrocket his net worth mithras having a heck of a game but anti-mages when they're left alone they get so much room to work and you've seen it time and time again and it's exactly what's happening in this pub game now, I could spend a lot of time talking about what these teams are doing wrong, but there's a lot that they're doing right, too. I mean, most of it is. The, the, the one big thing, glaring, the glaring issue for me is the lack of smoke. So they're using them, but they're not using them as consistently as I feel like they could be. Still, though, you're not really trying to smoke his, uh, this, this dire team until you have anti-mage up, which he is now, until you have that blink dagger on the earth shaker. So now that they have these, these, these utensils, finally, to, to be able to find these kills, they can absolutely smoke, but first they're going to clear up the Sage attack for Mithras after he's just gotten his Manta style. He's going to have like 700 gold back in the bank here. Oh, or 1,000. That works too. Dagon level 3 coming out for the what? He's just been leveling that up. It's been Bottle, Aquila, Dagon. He's going to find a Dagon 4 momentarily. That zap, the double zap in fact. How much burst damage is that going to be at level 4? 700 burst damage, 1400. The elf pool of most of these heroes is not even above that. In fact, that could just blow up Slark if he doesn't use his abilities correctly. Yeah, Mech might be able to save them, but they're going to jump in. There's the toss avalanche combo. Mid or Nickelback, he gets the Echo Slam off. There's the Fisher coming through. Not yet in time. There it is. Dark Pact still actually gets off that Fisher stun. Mid or Nickelback still in trouble. The Supernova breaking now. Some Firestorm on the ground, but Bingo Teddy gets stun locked in place. They still will find two, and very important one in that Arc Warden. Call missing because of a great blinding light, but Sandman still in trouble getting chased down. Stunned up, and he's going to get caught. Three dead, and another calling blade for DGC's son. And they'll look to push in his tier 2 tower finally, but they want to stop this pressure from Mithras. TP in from Heartbroken, blink out, no avalanche combo. And even if there was, he still is going to survive with that level 4 spell shield. But with the amount of heroes they have in this mid lane, the Radiant team will be able to take this, no problem. Jishalame. Jishalama. Don't know what that means. I believe this is played on USC's. The guys from Ottawa, Canada, Radiant's so it had to be. Well, I shouldn't say it had to be, but. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Man, put mouse is good. Twenty-six minutes in, and this this game looks like it could be a long one. Some really good vision, some smart moves by the Radiant team. Yes, they're playing more as five than they are splitting up the map and farming, which is going to hinder them in terms of experience, and perhaps gold as well. <coughs> Excuse me, but they're still doing very well in that five-man regard. And uh, now is around the time, usually in pub games, especially that Roshan becomes an issue or, or becomes a factor, not an issue, but something that teams consider doing. In fact, both teams are starting to kind of congregate around that area. What you really want to do as this raiding team is take down this last tier 2 tower in this bottom lane so you don't really have the easy access points to come in and defend Roshan as the dire team. If they can do that, then the, the access to Roshan is a bit more open and free. And it seems to be what they want to try to do here. They have all five heroes, well, four heroes down bottom. Lit, Lit will make his way there momentarily, I would imagine. And the Anti-Mage can TP in. The, the Slark does not have that luxury. So if they want to fight now, this is maybe their best opportunity. If they know where the heroes are. And Tempest Devil will spot out one. Look at that damage just from the one Dagon. And Bingo Teddy taking a lot of damage. Spark Wraith not going to be there in time. The Tempest Devil will not be able to find a second Dagon. Icarus dive out, coming out from the Phoenix just to make sure he stays alive. Look how far everyone's backing in. Lit, lit, lit is just trying to see if Radiant's there's vision, if there's anybody to be picked attack. over there. No such luck. And they're going to go for it again. Toss, avalanche, combo, Sandman not dead yet. Spark Race mechs up. Blink, Actor Slam only onto one. Lit, lit's still in trouble though. Getting close with that Shadow Dance, but will stay alive. The Coin Blue will take down the first target in that game. It's going to be, of course, Sandman on that 
keep them in light. They will might try to go back in here and re-engage. In fact, the pounce is coming through on the other side. It's on the mid or Nickelback. He'll fall first. Super up on top. Heartbroken coming with an avalanche. They've gotten three. Mana Boy, not nearly enough damage. Can Mithra solo this? It doesn't look like it. He's stunned up. He's disabled. He'll have to blink out. And the what cannot do it on his own. Icarus dive further. They've got call ready to go in five. Not enough for now. But the pounce will come up and connect. They've got that calling blade. And the what will fall. A triple kill for the sacks. Axe continues to dominate the pub stratosphere, and they will find a four kill, well, three kill advantage as the Phoenix does end up falling. Still an amazing fight coming out for this Radiant team. 930 gold for this Axe, and Mithras just, he looked like he was a little too late to the party, and he can't quite do it alone. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. He did end up going back for Vanguard, by the way. Interesting decision. But they'll take the tier 2 tower, not capable of taking the Roshan afterwards, or at least they decided not to. A little sword picked up for the Underlord. I'll take that. And this Earthshaker, who's having such a good game, has stalled out significantly. Look at his net worth right now. He's sitting at last place. Even Sandman has higher farm than he does with the mech and the yeah, sure, gold. There it goes. Still, though, he's one good Echo Slam away from changing this game. And uh, you can see the Treant's going to have eyes in the forest pretty soon. We're talking 700 gold. But he's also sort of been slowed down. Heartbroken, still going for that Caster build. Blink Force, Arcanes. Yes, he's got a lot of mobility. But again, if the game goes late enough, he's not going to be able to man fight these heroes. Regeneration. Especially if BKBs start coming. The Slark is still just sitting at Silver Edge, 2,000 gold and Ultimate Orb, so he's also kind of been slowed down. The Axe has gotten plenty of kills, which has kept him up. Alright. Fight breaking out in the jungle here. Tempest double about to get caught, but Happy Yell is going to be the one that really dies. Can't get off his overgrowth in time, and the Dyer have to back away yet again. Mithras is looking to come in from the side, but he decided against it. Can they try to pin some maneuver here? Supernova, Fisher's on the ground. They're going to go for the Supernova. Can they take it down? Great toss, and it's not in time, unfortunately. DGC Sun, there's the Echo Slam. Mana Boy not coming out. There's going to be the Pit of Malice on the ground. They try to give him the defensive capabilities of that Arc Ward. It's not enough. And Litlit -Lit now backing away. No more Shadow Dance. Dark Axe has been available. Still a Super 1 trade. Pretty good fight for the Radiant team, and the King, they can get out here, but Heartbroken wants to go back in. They have good vision. And it's getting dewarded. Here comes the Silver Edge. Tempest Double not spotting it out. They have the Sentry there. Good Blinding Light. They need more help. Mithras is back in. No Abyssal. Now Sandman in trouble. The Dagon! Can they bring him down? Where's the Mana Void? He's not using it. He just wants one more right He'll finally use it to get the kill. Heartbroken goes back in a bit too late there, but it was close. Heartbroken still low. Now DGC Sun looking for a call, but the blink gets him out in time. Heartbroken tries to juke and judge with his own blink dagger. They get the Lotus Orb off, and Mithras is doing it all alone. He'll blink away. He doesn't want to go for the kill, which might have been the smart decision there. Probably could go back in again here. They have more help coming in. TP's going to come through. This will be from the Earthshaker. He's got blink dagger ready to go. Fisher's there. He's going to find Bingo Teddy, and they should find another pickoff with this. No way for the Underlord to get out. The Dagon will come through. The Enchant Totem comes in as well. And Mithras will find this pickoff. The Ark Warden getting that last hit. So they do turn it around. And Mithras continues to be a factor in these fights. Can he solo carry this game? Look at where the net worth stands for all of his players than himself. He's got that Basher. Abyssal Blade is coming. That was the inevitable, the inevitable choice. I, I should have said the Vanguard going back for it instead of being the Basher first was what I thought was interesting about the build. Uh, but I guess not. It's pretty standard, to be fair. And he's got it flying out as we speak. Not only that, but he's got 1,600 gold, so a full Abyssal Blade. And as you've noticed in this game, the biggest problem with the Steyr team is I feel like they've been really lacking disables. And I say that with Overgrowth and with what an Earthshaker could provide. It's just not enough at this point. They're too slippery on this Radiant team. Slark especially. You really need to be able to Abyssal him to bring him down. And Roshan continues to be an obstacle that neither team really wants to delve into at this point.
Mech wind lace up for the Sandman. The Sandman. I got my Mithras cam locked in. It is going to be a Dagon for Heartbroken. Dagon 2. 500 burst damage. Some of these squishy heroes will die pretty instantly. Keep the Light will die. Pretty much to one combo on its own, let alone having Dagon on top of it. Scotty's about done for Litlit, -lit, though, and uh, that's a gigantic choice in Burgess. But we've entered the phase where both teams are backing off. They're starting to just farm, and they're not trying to go for anything crazy. Which travel finally done for the Arc Warden, so his efficiency is going to start being a bit higher. Still, though, not much really happening in this stage of the game. The anti just picked up Boots of Travel. I mean, he's by far and away the leader. This guy is playing, you know, at another level, essentially, while these guys are still trying to just deal with him in this game. And this is where it gets the hardest. He's got 2.3k HP. He's sitting on 21 armor. He has Boots of Travel and Treads, not only... He's going to have a butterfly soon, I would imagine. And they're going to try to go for a kill on him again. It looks like they're heading in that direction. By the time they get there, that smoke is going to dissipate. They're not going to be there in time. And this ward will scout out the Underlord if he's not careful. And it looks like they're lucky. They will still catch out Sandman if he's in deep shit. Recipe Sandman. Radiant's top tower is under attack. Sandman, Mithras could probably solo heartbroken. Yeah, he's going for it. The illusions aren't being micro. There they go. Radiant's top tower is under attack. Good juke. Good juke. Well played. Mithras is gonna make it out just fine. It looks like no way they catch him. Uh, maybe with the Radiant's axe, but I, I don't really see them. Attack. Yeah, they're not gonna connect on this. He's gonna bots out more, more than likely here. Meanwhile, Litlit's -Lit's looking for Happy Hail, and Happy Hail has realized he's probably in trouble. Nature's guys will go, and he doesn't have detection, so Happy Hail, they get the Fisher off. They have the Abyssal Blade. No, it's down for three seconds. They need detection. They don't have a gem. And he'll get back with his team. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Litlit -Lit being a bit too aggressive with this Slark. I know you want to get kills, but you're just not at the point where you can solo kill and you can get out. You don't have, like, a way to be able to deal with a lot of these Radiant's disables. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Other than Dark Pact. And at some point here in the near future, we're going to see a Roche attempt. In fact, Mithras can solo this thing. I'm, I'm positive Mithras can solo this Roche. Radiant's bottom tower and still push out bottom. Take the tier 2 tower easy. Tower and threaten high ground more than likely. They don't seem that concerned. Finally, the bots will come in from uh, Arc Warden. And if you're the Radiant team, you have to be concerned. In fact, they're already keeping back at least one of the Slark. And it's a Tempest double. He has broken Dagon. Still get brought down. But now they're fighting four versus five. This is a bit questionable. Samuel will find himself in some trouble. Good Fisher will keep him alive. The mech, there's the Echo Slam on it too. The Sunray keeping them healthy. Still trying to fight this. Heartbroken in trouble with all the spells and utility on cooldown. Here comes Mithras. Supernova is going to be there. Will Mithras change targets? He can't. He's actually caught in this pit of malice. He'll turn his attention and realize he's going to get stunned. He'll blink out. And we'll see what happens next. The Fisher comes through on it too. Nicely done from mid or Nickelback. Still getting brought down. Will be the first of all. The Dire Side, but they do take down the Axe. And here comes Mithras. He's got the Abyssal Blade, but again gets caught by that Pit of Malice. Mint is out of it. Now we'll go to work. And he gets disabled by that Avalanche, but still getting caught. Heartbroken. Will be the one to fall. Will they get more? They're going to jump back in. He's got the Abyssal. He'll go to work and he stuns up Litlit, -Lit, but he Dark Pacted it off, I believe. Or at least he just was able to shadow dance after the abyssal's been done. Mithras is going to turn his attention back towards said hero. And it's a mad fight. He'll blink away. No mana left for Lit. He does stick back up and he's going to go back in as he's got the regen coming in from that shadow dance now. And Mithras is looking for his team saying, we can go on this guy. And we're going to try forward again here. He's got abyssal in five. And Spark Wraith is not going to connect. And he will shadow blade out. They need a gem. And at the end of the day, it is still an advantage for this dire team. And Mithras continues to get out of control. Now up to 4,000 gold. He's going to be 6 slotted momentarily. He'll probably sell his Vlads next and get another item after Butterfly, which should be the slot that he puts for this uh, Power Treads. Will be his Butterfly, I would imagine. Radiant's middle tower is under attack. It is backdoor protected, by the way. Not anymore, but... 
looking to rotate over to deal with the split push. There's a lot of uh, invis coming out here, and Mithras might be caught. Here comes Lit, backs away instantly. Mithras with the, the play he knows that when the blip happens, that's more than likely when the defense is coming, or at least being set up. And Mithras will go back to work on the season age. Been a pretty quiet game for a lot of these other carries or other characters. Underlord doing relatively well. There's two Phoenixes having a pretty good time also. Happy Hill, we've talked about his Aghanim Scepter, the Tempest Double from the what? He's got a Blink Dagger now, so that's good. And uh, Sandman, he's died a fair bit of times. That's not surprising considering what hero he is. Keeper of the Light with an Aghanim Scepter might be a bit more survivable. Unfortunately, went for Mech first, which I get. I understand. But uh, an Aghanim Scepter might have been... Uh, another choice that you could have gone. Here we go, the Radiant team. They've decided to say we're going to hit Roshan first at 39 minutes into this game. And that's going to be the decision made by this Radiant squad. Radiant's top tower is under attack. Happy Hill has been scouted out by an Observer Ward. How far will they go for this kill or this attempt? There's an Observer Ward here on the high ground, too, which is scouting out DGC Sun. So vision on both sides. Blink is up. There's the Dakin coming out. The Supernova, or the Sunray, rather, trying to clear out this Arc Ward. And Lucian just dropped the Supernova on top. What a mistake. That's not worth it. Heartbroken looking to fight now. Avalanche will hit on the Sandman. Still in trouble. They're going to jump through. They really want to defend this, but the Rax is being taken top lane. You can see it happening as Mithras is going to get a full set here. And then there's going to be the mech coming out there fighting. But look at the time being wasted by this Happy Hill tree and protector. And look at what Mithras is doing. He's going to get the full set of racks. It doesn't matter who dies here on this side of the dire. The what's just using his Tempest double. Finally, they use the Underlord's Dark Rift, but it's not going to matter. It's too late. The top Rax is gone. And Mithras is in. He's going to look to try to fight this. He blinks up. He's looking for that Abyssal, and he'll find it. And Heartbroken is going to get brought down. There's going to be the thicker side for the Phoenix, which will allow him to escape for the time being. He has a TP score. Probably should have used it now. But he will survive. And it will be the Roshan taken by the Dire team. Or at least it should be. As Mithras is pushing out mid. There's his butterfly completed as per predicted. And he's made his home in this top lane. He sat up here hitting this tier 2 tower for pretty much the entirety of the game. And finally, he gets an opportunity to say, well, everybody's fighting back at Roshan. I can just take this top lane of Rax, and it's exactly what he does. Which is huge. I mean, that turns the game around completely. Not that it wasn't really already going for them, but you can see the spark rate coming in. There's the mech to keep the Phoenix like it. Cooper Stive will get him out of trouble. At least for now. Bingo Teddy, no Dark Rift again. We talked about it. He's building into another plate mill for more than likely a Shiva's Guard. Good spark rate from the what to just make sure he stops anybody from coming in. He'll take the Aegis too. As Mithras is 6 slot, you can put your Vlads down. I think that might be the right choice just to have that Aegis. I, I, I think his life is too valuable at this point. At 41 minutes into the game, is he's 30,000 net worth on the Sanctum Age. Mithras just strutting. And, uh, well... The five man was really good for this Radiant team, but they haven't really split up. They haven't farmed, and obviously the anti mage is going to be able to do so a million times faster than any hero in this game. You can go back to the the tiny and his build, and especially against an anti mage. I mean, this none of this is really pure damage. You know, you've got magical in both the toss and the avalanche. So you're wondering why you're going to this item build against the spell shield of the anti mage with a passive of 50% magic resistance. Not to mention the fact that he's insanely tanky. Well, hindsight's 2020, and uh, when it comes down to it, I do think the Radiant had some really good team fights. In fact, most of the team fights in this game, they've either won handedly or lost very closely. But it just doesn't matter when the anti mage is outplaying you, and that's exactly what this game is about. At 42 minutes, though, the game is not over. There's ways back into this, and it's going to be a difficult task. This Lark is one hero that can do it, as we've seen. You know, in the past. Uh, the What's Tempest double is going to work against this Phoenix. The Phoenix is fine. Uh, I want to say fine. Took a lot of damage from those creeps there. And every, you can see, like, the, the rotations that are made. You see one hero or a Tempest double. You can see the Radiant team just kind of, like, moving over in that direction. Like, they're all committing for, like, this one hero. And it just allows the anti mage to roam free. They're not putting pressure on him. They're not smoking to kill him. It's very difficult to do so, but... And this is the problem with the composition they're running. They need to have a blink call, toss avalanche, and then they need to have the Slark come in, pounce, and do a lot of damage in that, in that meantime. 
DGC blinks forward, but that might be his death. He gets Dagon 1, Dagon 2. Illuminate coming out. Very tanky, but still should fall. Toss back in. Probably not helping. And he'll pop the blade mail, but he will inevitably fall. But Sandman will go down too. His lit blade has shown up. In fact, DGC will stay alive, and it's a great fight for this Radiant Squad. They're turning it around. The West Tempest Devil will have to take damage. His real hero is leaving. But again, look at what's happening down bottom. Mithras sees the perfect opportunity to take another set of racks. It happens not once this game, but twice. And Mithras will get two sets without any issues other than his team dying. And at this point, they're completely expendable. I don't want to I don't want to take away from his supporting cast because they've done a great job. But that that is all just his positioning. And really, the enemy team not pushing out this bottom lane. You've got to try to push it past the river. If it's anywhere near this area, he's going to push. He's got boots to travel. And he that was a perfect he's item pickup, too. He didn't pick it up too late. He picked it up right at the perfect time where he could just TP around the map. It's really great. Honestly, just a, a stellar performance. And this is what I live for when we're casting these replay games. Just to have these either A, individual performances, or B, like this crazy team fight combo that just, you know, blows my mind. It's uh, it, This is actually, it's funny. One of the first games I ever casted was in this thing called the Reddit Dota 2 League. And there was this guy, maybe 5K MMR. He's playing, and he was playing Anti-Mage. And I, at the time, I hadn't played Dota for very long. And so anything he was doing was impressing the shit out of me. That's kind of how I feel about the Anti-Mage right now. I've seen this a ton. I've seen Anti-Mages take over games a lot. And especially in this MMR range, too. But it's just cool to see it again and kind of go back to my roots. I think it's really, really interesting. But he's got to clean. He's got to. He's got to finish the game off. He's gotten two sets of racks, and they really haven't won a team fight yet. And that might be the deciding factor. They go on Bingo Teddy with the Arc Ward, but back in sword. Afraid they have heartbroken. Nitter Nickelback is going to get caught. The Surge Shaker gets off the Echo Slam, but Litlit is still fighting fit. He wants to bring this down. Final will get the kill, but the Dagon now coming out. Litlit. No more Shadow Dance for 16 seconds. He's got Dark Pack ready to go. Meanwhile, here comes DM chewing through Mana Void. Gets the double kill. Mithras will find two, and he wants more. He's out for blood. This Anti Mage having a heck of a game. 45 minutes in. And he's looking for more. He'll push straight down mid. He knows the biggest hero is down on the enemy side. And that Slark, and he wants this tier 2 tower. It is backdoor protected. He does not give a damn. The creeper will be here momentarily, but it, by the time it is, he'll bring down that tier 2 tower. And it's onward and upward to the tier 3. Slark forced to buy back. No buyback to the Underlord. They're fighting 4 versus 4. There's no there's Earthshaker right now. Mithras will back away, but here we go. The what's got his Tempest double up now. Stopping DGC from blinking it. Nice play, but here comes Slark in the back line. Looking for Sandman. He's going to find him with the Dark Pack. Should get this kill. The mech is still there. Guardian Greaves up. They get the Abyssal Blade off. Is this a dieback? He does barely survive. There's the call. Just trying to stop Mithras from getting this kill, but Litlit is low in HP. Good Supernova stun, but here comes Mithras. Blinks in. Mana Void should not be there. It is down for 15 seconds. They really need to clean this up. They've already lost one. The Age is back up for the Tempest double, rather the Arc Warden. And Mithras calls for the back, or whoever calls for the back, backed it up. And it looks like that will be the end, as the Nature's Guys does save the Tree Protector. Still, though, Mithras goes back and he bots to the top lane to Manta style and bring down the Tier 3 Tower, and more than likely the Ranged Rex, too. DGC Sun still out of mana, not really taking that much damage from these illusions. The What's Tempest Double will fall. Just when you thought the Dire team didn't really get much out of it, they come back in and take a tier 3 tower, put some small amount of damage on that range racks on top of it. And it's just starting to get out of control for this Radiant team. They are being split. They are being ratted. Whatever you want to call it. There's nothing they really can do at this point in time. Except try to keep these waves pushed out. There's so much great vision obviously coming in from the eyes of the forest from this tree protector. I mean, they've got the map covered. No gem has been picked up by the Radiant team, which is probably one of the biggest mistakes you can make in this scenario. Not that they have the money for it. Well, actually, they do have the money for it, but they're probably saving for buyback. I would consider. Or other items. Yeah, I, don't, I really don't know where you go from here. Uh, the Aghanim Scepter is finally going to come out for this Keeper of the Light, so we'll be a bit tankier now. And Mithras is... Got a Moon Shard. He's got a heart. Got a freaking Manta, Butterfly, Battle Fury, and Abyssal Blade. I don't really think you... Short of an MKB, which I don't think you need. Uh, I don't know what else you buy this game after you have your Moon Shard. Now, he's got it all. Maybe a BKB. You could switch between the two or Fresh Orb afterwards. Gets the first hit bash. Abyssal doesn't use it in time for some reason. Litlit doesn't have... Oh, he does have a Sentry, though. And Litlit's going to get caught. The Mana Boy doesn't get off the Shadow Dance. And that's it. He's dead for 100 seconds. 
no buyback. The most important character on this Radiant side is dead. That's that's probably going to be it for morale in terms of this Radiant team. It's not going to be it for the game, but I would imagine that you just push down and you try to finish this game off with the Dire team. And they'll do just that. They'll push in bottom, they'll push in mid. And they have 78 seconds with which to work. The Tempest Double will come in. He'll throw down a Spark Wraith. Fluxes up. And here comes the Mantas. Or rather, the anti Mage without the Mantas being used. They'll pop the Crimson Guard. Blink Call only catches out of one great move for Mythus. He's going to go try to go on Bingo Teddy. And luckily, it looks like they're doing some good damage here for this Radiant side. They even have the Supernova up. And Mithras is going to try to go to work on this Phoenix side. It's not going to work out in his favor, however. But he is still very tanky. I just don't think they can bring him down without the Slark. They just don't have the damage right now. He's going to hit him out. Let's jump in. Echo Slam. The Dagons will come out. And Mithras will help clean up. And with three dead, with no buybacks of those three heroes, it looks like it is going to be Megas. DGC will try to fight this to the last breath here. But it looks like this game is just about over. The Anti-Mage looking to regen with his Heart of Trash quickly before getting back into the fray. And it's exactly what he'll do. And it is Megas. Meanwhile, Heartbroken chasing outside of the base. You can look. Sandman was probably the target that he wanted. Illuminate's going to come through. And even the AM getting in on the action still gets craggy at the end. But... <laughs> and Mithras is... Uh... He's done it. He's carried his team to victory. Slark's back up in 8, but he cannot do this on his own. And the tier 4s are being assaulted by just about everything. Well played. And the the GG comes out from Victorus knowing that he's won. Solid performance from this anti-mage. Really great stuff from the dire side. Radiant team. It just wasn't there. Team comp. The, the, the lack of killing the AM early. Whatever you want to call it. They did not have a good way to deal with the anti-mage. And he successfully carries the game for them. So that'll do it for this replay cast. I should have waited to see who, who tipped who. Uh, again, I don't know who exactly was the protagonist of the story. I, I would imagine Mithras, but I can imagine anybody on the dire side being the person that actually submitted this replay. The person that did submit this replay, Steve Windsor, thank you so much for uh, coming to Moonduck TV with your cast. Um, thanks for supporting our channel, uh, what we do as well, what I do. Absolute pleasure getting to watch that game. Great game, by the way. If you guys have more games like this, this is what I want to see during replay games. These are the games that I want to see. So submit those. Uh, if you'd like to find out how to purchase a Moonduck TV replay cast, go over to Moonduck.tv for more information. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter, uh, twitter.com slash Dota. And with that, I'm going to go and try to make myself feel better from this illness. So absolute pleasure. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you guys next time.